Hello, my name is Pastor Mary Sajak. Welcome to Baker Memorial United Methodist Church online. It's a joy to be with you here in this way. Coronavirus has changed so much about our lives, but one thing it cannot steal from us is our ability and our desire to worship God. So welcome to this time of worship. Today's service is a little different than what we've been doing for the last many weeks. The Northern Illinois Conference uh, cabinet, which is made up of our bishop and our district superintendents, recognized that pastors and church worship teams were actually getting a little bit worn out by all of these changes that we've had to go through and trying to do worship in this new way. And so they have created a worship service online for us and actually very strongly encouraged every church to use this so that every church could get at least one weekend of Sabbath. I'm grateful for their uh, messages. The bishop delivers a lovely sermon on a gospel passage from the Gospel of John. And uh, you'll get to experience a little bit of the diversity of our uh, conference, which um, has uh, Spanish-speaking congregations, Korean congregations, and you'll see a little bit of that in our service today. I'd like to begin our time of worship with our announcements from Baker Memorial United Methodist Church, and then we'll move on from here to just experiencing the worship service that has been provided. Thank you for your time, and may God bless you on this day. First, I'd like to invite you to be a part of our prayer chain ministry. Please join the prayer ministry by emailing info at bakermemorialchurch.org. You'll receive a list of people and situations that need prayer. We simply ask you to take that list and pray with it, at least on that day. This is an important task for the church. We believe that prayer changes things. So this may be your gift. Please put it to use. A reminder that we still have an urgent need for face masks. The entire world is going to need face masks at some point, and United Methodist Committee on Relief is in ministry here in the United States, but also around the world. So none of these face masks are going to go to waste. If you'd like to, con if you are able to donate fabric, get materials in a pattern to sew some, or drop off masks to be sent, please contact Chris Stumpf. Our Sunday morning gatherings for our youth are going on by Zoom at 10 and 10.30. Please contact Carl King at Baker Youth at bakermemorialchurch.org to get and stay connected. And our children's ministry is also going on by Zoom. 6 o'clock for preschool, 6.30 for elementary. Shelly Steenbarger is in charge of that program, so please contact her if you'd like to find out more. We are planning a socially distant middle school party uh, that is, of course, weather and virus permitting. Uh, there'll be an outdoor movie theater and socially distant games. Saturday, June 6th, 6 o'clock to 9.30. Please RSVP to Carl King at the address on the screen. Our 2020 to 21 confirmation class is forming now. We will be meeting in the fall, whether it's online or in person, we don't know yet. But please contact Carl at the address again to let them know that you're interested or if you have any questions. We're sad to say that our youth mission trip to Motown Missions in Detroit has been canceled by the agency, but we do have an opportunity to utilize our youth and help them grow in mission and service right here in our area. If you have ideas or needs, please contact Carl at the same address. Happy to say that we are planning for VBS to be on online, that is. And we're working on how to do that right now. If you'd like to be a part of that uh, creative process, please contact Shelly Steenbarger. Most of our Immerse small group study groups are completed, and so we're now looking at our next study group. We're planning to do something called Five Cups of Coffee for many of the groups. These are simple conversations around what it means to be a Christian. If you would like to be a part of one, you'll be receiving an invitation shortly. We simply ask that you would actually go ahead and sign up through the link that we provide by email. We are going to begin these groups in June and we'll bring them through to you through Zoom. And a final reminder, this weekend is Memorial Day. Please take a moment out of the midst of your celebrations to remember that many have died for our nation. 
And also remember, if you know of anybody who has lost a loved one to our national service, please reach out and comfort them who mourn. It is so very difficult to be in grief and to see the rest of the world celebrating a holiday. So please take this time to comfort those who mourn. And now I invite you to just uh, receive this worship service that's been provided by the cabinet of the Northern Illinois Conference. God be with you. day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with us. We will definitely continue to rejoice. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to worship with the bishop and the cabinet of the Northern Illinois Annual Conference. We are so glad that you decided to tune in on this day to be with us, to be present with us, to open your heart, to open your minds and open your spirits for what God has in store for you today. Why don't you take a little time and register your attendance in the way that you normally do. I'm sure that your pastors would love to know who worshiped on this day. Remember that God is in this place. God is touching you. God lives on the inside of you. And we just want to worship today. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a wonderful day. It's going to be a spirit-filled day. I don't know about you, but I love to praise and worship God. I love to be in the presence of others, even when it's through online worship. There's nothing wrong with that because God is where we are. We are the church and we are the people of God. So why don't you just take this opportunity to worship and praise the Lord. Please pray with me. Eternal God, as we gather together to worship you today, we pray that your Holy Spirit connect us with one another, that we might feel that Spirit filling us with your love and your grace. We pray that you silence the anxieties of our minds, the weariness of our hearts, the frustrations that we might have experienced throughout this week, so that we can be fully present to you in this time of worship so that we might hear you whispering once again your gospel message of resurrection and hope to our hearts, and that we might be transformed by your grace, so that we might go forth to celebrate your love with all. All this we pray in your Son Jesus' name. Amen. Hi kids, I'm Pastor Jeffrey, and uh, I'm glad you're spending a few moments with me today. You know, I've been cooped up in my house for so long, it feels so good and I'm so happy to be outside in one of my favorite areas in my house. I'm in my garden and I love my garden. I love the variety, I love the colors, I love how there's so many different variations that God has created. And that says something very special about who God is. God creates and God creates wonderful and, and uh, beautiful varieties of plants and animals and people. Each one of us is unique in our own way, yet we are wonderfully made. When God created us, God said, I am so happy. And so it's good to be one of God's children. It's good to be one of God's creation. And so I like to get outside and look at all of the creation. And as I walk around and look in my garden and, and look elsewhere and look up into the sky, I can't even count the number of varieties of plants and animals I see. There's just so many. So maybe today you go out with your parents and try to count as many different types of plants or animals that you see and see how vast and how big God has created this world to be. And then you can think about yourself 
and know that even though you're just one of so much creation, God knows you by name and God loves you. Because scripture tells us that there's many rooms in God's house for all of us. And if you look over my shoulder, up top, there's a robin sitting up in that nest right now, sitting on her eggs. And that's a house for her. And I've got some other houses around my house where animals are living. And this house right here is where I live. But no matter what, God has room for all of us and loves each and every one of us. So try to get outside, get some fresh air, and enjoy today, and look for all the different and wonderful things God has made. I'll be praying for you today. God bless you. We are now at the time in our worship service where we get to reclaim a very ancient tradition called the passing of the peace. I want to take us back to its original meeting because sometimes in worship when we're gathered together in a sanctuary, what ends up happening is we just use this as a social time to say, hello, how are you? But its original meaning, its original purpose was this understanding that from Christ alone we can be rooted in peace, that there is a hopefulness to a life in Christ that gives us what scripture calls um, in the message version, a crazy peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. It comes to us from the scriptures when Jesus was died and buried and the empty tomb was discovered and they did not know what was happening. And so they all hid together, scared, full of anxiety, not sure what the future held. And Jesus breaks in to this place and he looks at his people and he says, peace be with you, my peace I give to you. And that is the same peace that we get the great joy of sharing with all of those around us. Now we may be all uh, cooped up in our homes, but I invite you to think of someone you know that needs peace, someone that is feeling fear, holding on to anxiety, someone that doesn't know what the future holds. And I invite you to name them. If you're watching on Facebook, you can tag them and say, peace be with you. If you're watching on YouTube or in Zoom, you can write it in the comments section or the chat section. So-and-so, peace be with you. Because friends, there continues to be a lot of anxiety in our world today, a lot of fear about the future, uncertainty about how we will go back to normal. So we need the peace of Christ more than ever. ever. It is rooted in this great hope and great joy of Christ's peace that I say to you, may the peace of Christ be with you. And your response is, and also with you. Friends, through our typed word, let us take a moment to share signs of peace and reconciliation with a world that is hungry for that very thing. Peace be with you.
Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, the first three verses, as found in the Common English Bible. Don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. My Father's house has room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me, so that where I am, you will be too. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Trust in God. Trust also in me, Jesus says to his disciples. The New Testament word in Greek can be translated into English two different ways, to believe or to trust. Many of us may have learned this passage from John as, believe in God, believe also in me. But for me, there's a big difference between believing and trusting. To believe something is to know it, mostly in our head. I believe what I've seen or experienced or what I've been taught. Beliefs are important because they provide direction for us. I believe in gravity, so I don't recklessly jump off high places. And I believe in gravity because I've also experienced it. Likewise with the beliefs of our faith. Belief is expressed in our creed, such as the Apostles' Creed. I have been taught these beliefs and they impact my faith and therefore, I hope, my way of living. We often equate our faith with belief almost exclusively. I believe, so I have faith. But let's admit it. Some days it's easier to believe than others. In God, in resurrection's hope, and in the goodness of others. We all find ourselves having at least a few moments, often during the night, fearful and worried. When it's difficult to believe, then we wonder if we have faith. It's like the poem found written on the wall of the World War II concentration camp by a Jewish, Jewish pr prisoner. It's entitled, I Believe. It says, I believe in the sun even when it isn't shining. I believe in love even when there's no one there. But I believe in God even when he's silent. I believe through any trial, there is always a way. Then the song shifts from belief to trust. May there someday be sunshine. May there someday be goodness. May there someday be love. May there someday be peace. Trust isn't just about what I think or know. It's what I count on stake my claim on, even my life on. If belief is in our head and thinking, then trust is in our heart, maybe deep in our bones. Trust is an important component of our faith. Maybe the difference between belief and trust can be described like this. Rabbi Emeritus, teacher and scholar Lawrence Kushner tells how he was working with a group of Jewish junior high school kids. He asked them if they believed in God. And he was hoping, as a good teacher, that some would say yes, maybe some would say no, and it would create a very dynamic discussion. But no one said they believed in God, not one. Kushner was devastated. He remembers thinking, so it's come to this, 3,000 years of piety and struggle and agony for a bunch of suburban kids that don't believe in God. And then later on in the discussion, he inadvertently asked them, how many of you have ever felt close to God? Every kid raised a hand. Somehow being close to God, that resonated with them. Close to God at Shabbat when the mother lit the candles or being outside in nature or some other profound experience, that was more real to them than believing in God. Believing in one's mind can sometimes come and go, or sometimes it just takes a long time to develop. But they felt close to God, that's what they wanted. And I suggest that's what trust is, trusting that God is there no matter what the mind thinks on in any given day. 
The opposite of trust isn't distrust, but anxiety and worry. And that's why I like trust in God, trust in me, as Jesus spoke to his disciples. That too was a time of great anxiety and worry. As I've pondered before, after 9-11, people rushed back to the church, but then it all dropped off. Was it that we didn't focus enough on developing trust in God and went back to making sure people believed all the right things? Maybe trust comes first and belief later. When your world is turned upside down, all the things you thought you believed in, like skyscrapers should stay in the sky, or now, all the things that we suddenly have in our lives that are overturned, plans of all kind, not being free to come and go as we please. This isn't life as we have known it, as we believed it to be. It's all upside down in what we thought we knew and believed about our lives. Belief just doesn't get you through the night. But trust can. When I wake up in the middle of the night and try to go back to sleep, I'll tell you, I don't recite the Apostles' Creed. I slowly say the 23rd Psalm. Now that's a trust builder. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A parent doesn't sing the ABC song as a lullaby. That's a song that teaches, but it doesn't strengthen trust and assurance. We need songs, psalms, and messages of trust and assurance in our lives right now to strengthen our faith, to get us through. In one of the churches I served for many years, we sang an anthem a lot, especially at critical times. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. We began singing it during Desert Storm. There was one woman who had a number of family members deployed into the war effort. We were all afraid for them. We prayed for them every week and we frequently sang this song. Now you have to understand, she and I didn't always see eye to eye, meaning we didn't always believe the same way about things. So she would tell people that I worried more about her family than she did meaning she was trusting in God more than me, that she had more faith than I did. Oh, well, maybe so. Many of the people in the church believed very differently from her about the war, but they sang the song as a prayer, seeking to trust in God for themselves as well as for her. While people didn't see eye to eye on some things during that time, and she was often the outlier in the community, she relied on the strength and support that only a community of faith can give and that is unattainable on our own. As is often the case, our differing beliefs caused animosity at times. But when we sang together, like surely it is God who saves me, I will trust in him and not be afraid. We were as one. The passage from John says, whoever trusts in Jesus will do the work that he does. And I think love for one another is one of the works that Jesus would have us to do. Trust requires community. That's why church, we can do this. We can get through together, staying strong and supporting each other whenever there's a need. When one flags in faith, we could stay together strong. Surely it is God who saves us. Trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is our stronghold and our sure defense, and he will be our savior. God bless you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give honor and praise and thanksgiving for the healthcare workers those persons who are staying with family members who are sick, those persons who are caring for those in the hospitals, those minimum wage and low, lowly paid workers who are stacking the shelves at our grocery stores, the gas station attendants, uh, 
those members of our society who will have to deliver our mail and our special packages, all those persons who are the least of us, yet they're still offering their service for us. God, we thank you for them and all of those persons, the, the, the healthcare workers, uh, the nurses, the doctors, uh, the list goes on and on for those who are behind the scene. Um, the, the parents of those children who are at home and trying to get an education uh, with limited resources and, and, and not the opportunity to be with their classmates. We, we pray for those kids who missed out on their graduations and proms and college, uh, uh, rec college visitations. And God, we ask that you would be with all of us no matter what our age, no matter what our color, no matter what our religion, uh, no matter what our zip code is, that you would be with us and continue to show your love for us as we come together and stay together as your children. We thank you, God. Amen. Please join us in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 하늘에서 이룬 것 같이 땅에서도 이루어지이다. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. Así como nosotros perdonamos a nuestros deudores. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Uh, during the sheltering in place, it's been said that the church buildings may be closed. But ministry is still happening. Pastors and churches across the conference have still been impacting lives in a variety of ways. Some have continued all ministry in new ways, while others have started something new to meet new needs. Our buildings are closed, but our ministry is still happening. And it will only continue to happen through the generosity of all God's people doing and offering what we can to make a difference. Let us be faithful to give as God has been faithful to give us all the grace, love, and encouragement we need. Let us answer God's calling to love others and make a difference through our uh, generosity.
Let us pray. 하나님의 백성이 하나님께 드린 예물을 우리 하나님께서 흠양하여 주시옵소서. God of grace, we praise you for your eternal love and grace. We thank you for the church. We thank you our home with you. We come to praise you in song, in word, and in action. Fill us with a spirit of gratitude and hope. Allow our giving to be signal our hope for a future with you and a future for your church. In the midst of the uncertainty, we have a confidence in you, in your character, in your nature, in your grace, truth, and love. We adore you, we know you, we trust you. So take us forward into a vital future. Realize your will in this world through us. Prepare us in every way to go into your world and offer blessing in your name. Amen. My dear friends, we continue sheltering in place and finding creative ways to share the good news of Jesus Christ. But we have the assurance that we are not alone in this journey. God is with us. Trust that He will nourish, empower, strengthen, and protect us. He will show us the way to be instrument of hope and love with all the people around us. And He will help us to be strong and courageous and faithful in whatever circumstance we are. Now, may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.